and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey, and here is a really awesome house building system. It's a great system for building any kind of structure. So it has the ability to place down objects like walls, doors, floors, stairs, and so on. It supports multiple levels, so I can make some small huts or some really complex mansions, and I can easily interact with everything with my normal 3D character. Then I also add the ability to place down some normal objects like trees, barrels, flowers, and so on. And just for fun, I also made some quick NPCs. So this is a house building system, but it's really not just limited to a single house. In the final demo, I have essentially a pretty nice village. You can download the project files for yourself in order to inspect all of the code. It's a really awesome system, and you can use this as a base to make a game where the player can build a house, so something like a survival game, or maybe a strategy game where you can build a castle, or a tower defense game where you build a maze bunker. So there's tons and tons of possible use cases for this system. So let's see how I made it and how it all works. But before that, do you want to learn how to make games from a veteran in the games industry? Then check out this video's sponsor, Jason Wyman, who makes some great game development courses. They are all extremely detailed and very well planned with expert life support whenever you need help. As a special deal, you can get the CodeMonkey course bundle, which includes not one, but all three courses for the price of one. It's a great guided path that will teach you how to make games from beginner to advanced. Learn all about C-Sharp with the programmer course, then master Unity along with all of its tools, and finally dive deep into the Code Architecture course where you will learn how to structure your games and write good clean code to help you make even better games. Jason is a veteran in the industry with many years of experience working on large teams and very complex AAA projects. Through the course you also gain access to an exclusive Discord server where you can chat and share ideas with fellow students. Also, as a bonus, if you pick up the course bundle through the link, you get Steam keys for all of my games as a nice free bonus, along with a mug, hoodie, and discount on future courses. So, if you want to learn how to make games, check out the link in the description. Okay, so let's see how I made the house building system. As usual, it is based on my super useful grid system. If you're new to the channel, go check out the full playlist link in the description. I've built a lot of this system over the course of many, many videos. The first one was two years ago, so this system has been very useful for very long and in many scenarios. My starting point was right from where I left off on the grid building system. Now in that one, I made a system to place down full buildings, so kind of like a city builder game. It's also the same system that I use in my factory sim game, where I use it to place down conveyor belts, grabbers, and buildings. So what I'm using here is really the same thing, except instead of placing down buildings, I'm going to be placing down objects. So doing that was really simple, thanks to how I previously set up the grid building system. All I need to do is just create a new scriptable object to hold the object type, so for example the floor, then I just create an object for the prefab and another one for the visual. So with just that, in about 10 minutes I can already move the mouse around and click to place down objects. Now, initially, the first tricky question was how do I handle walls? Now, the simple approach is just to make the walls a normal object that occupies a position on the grid. So, this works fine, but it does mean that the walls are quite thick. So, for some games, this works great. For example, in Prison Architect, it's a great game and their walls are indeed one unit thick. But in my case, I wanted some more realistic looking houses, so I wanted the walls to be relatively thin. Now, one approach that I could take to solve that would be to make the grid system super tiny so that one unit was very thin, but if I did that approach, then I could eventually encounter some serious performance issues with bigger levels. So after some thinking, I came up with a different approach. I would place down the floor objects the same as normal, and then each floor has four edge slots, so up, down, left, and right, and on those edge slots I can place down edge objects which occupy the whole edge. So doing that lets me place down floors with a normal size grid, and then it allows me to have some normal thin walls placed perfectly along the edges of the floors. And also, just for fun, in order to make the system look good as I was working on it, I grabbed some proper visuals. So these ones are from the Polygon Fantasy Kingdom pack, which I picked up during the spring sale. It's got tons of modular building parts, which made it absolutely perfect for working on this system. There's a link in the description if you want to grab it for yourself, it's a really awesome pack. The next thing that I really wanted in this system was the ability to have multiple levels. Doing this was also quite simple thanks to how the grid system works. Each grid has an origin, so that's a vector 3 for where the grid starts. So in order to make multiple levels work, all I needed to do was really just move the origin along the y axis. So that's it, very simple. All the objects are placed exactly on their grid position, so by just moving the grid origin it moves all the objects that are placed with it. So all it takes is to know which system I'm interacting with, and for that I really just made a button press and when I press it, it sets the next grid system as active. With that, I can have as many grid systems as I want to have as many levels as I need. Okay, so with that working, I just made a bunch more objects. 
First of all, added some stairs, which work the same as the walls, so it's an edge object, so it's placed on top of the floor. Then I added a door object, just made a simple hinge joint between the frame and door in order to make it move like a proper door. And with that, it was already enough objects to make a basic house with multiple levels. And in order to play around with the house building system, I also made a very simple character that I could move. I just made some very basic movement code and grabbed some free animations from the store. And for the visual, again, I used a character from the Polygon Fantasy Kingdom pack. So now I had a basic house and a character that I could control. And by this point, it was already a very cool system that would work perfectly in any sort of game where you want to add some building. But then I continued working and expand upon it some more. My next task was simply making some more object types. So I made a different type of floor. I made some walls with windows and some glass. The logic is all the same. They all use the exact same object types, just a different visual prefabs. So adding more variation to this system is super simple. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. With all that working, it was time to make a proper UI. So up until this point, I was selecting object types by pressing the number keys on my keyboard. So I just made some very basic buttons, took some screenshots to make the icons and some basic logic in order to click and select the object type. For the references, I used a Singleton Assets class, just like I use in pretty much every project. It's super easy to make and it lets me have direct access to all of those references anywhere in my codebase. With that, I could now easily make some pretty complex houses and move around with my player character. Now, the one important thing still missing was to make the player visible through walls. It's really not very useful if you completely lose track of where the player is while inside a building. So I need some way to see through those walls. Now, there are many ways to achieve this effect. I went with the simplest approach of just reading the character differently when behind an object. This is actually quite simple to do. Brackies made a really good tutorial on how to make it. You just need to work with the render pipeline asset. So first put the characters in their own layer, then make a render object feature in order to render the characters with the behind material and only render them if the depth is greater. So it only renders if the characters are occluded and a second render object feature, but this one to render the characters with a normal material and it only renders if the depth is less. So this one only renders the parts that are not occluded. So by combining those two, you have the normal characters when not occluded and a different material when occluded. It's a really simple effect and works great in this scenario. So with that, I could now easily control the player inside any house. Then I made a quick and simple save system just so I could start building some large houses and not have to remake them every time. It's pretty easy to do, just make a save object that stores the object type and their grid position. Then on load, just instantiate that same object in that same position. It's all quite simple. I covered it in more detail in another video, so go check it out if you want to learn how to make a save system. Then just for fun, I also made some basic NPCs. They just walk around through a bunch of waypoints and wait a bit. It's very simple and it works to make the demo sim look just a bit more alive. And to top it all off, I made another type of object that is placed separate from the grid. So these are the general objects which can be placed anywhere. They're not linked to any grid position. I've added a bunch of rocks, trees, crates, and so on. Again, all of them from that same Polygon Fantasy Asset Pack. And they also all work with the save system. So I can place them all, build a really nice village, save and load. And finally, after all of that, here is the final result. So I start off and over here, I've got my basic layer character. So I can simply move it around. Yep, there you go, looks pretty good. And also I've got some basic camera control. So I can move around, rotate and so on. So let's first place down some floors. So I just go into the UI to select the object type that I want. So let's begin by placing some floors just like this one. And over here is the real nice building ghost. If you want to know how this works, I covered it in more detail in the grid building system. So I just have, I just select where do I want and just start placing down some floors. As I click on them, you can see that they snap perfectly onto the grid. So there you go, here's a nice house. Now, next up, let's place down some walls. So I select the wall object. Let's place these types of walls. And now as I move the mouse over, you can see that it snaps into the various edge positions. So if I put near this edge, it connects into that one, that one, that one, and that one. All right, so I just place them alongside all of the wall edges. Now let's add a simple door just so I can go inside. And okay, here is a very simple hut. Now let's add a second floor. So for that, we need some stairs. So let's select the stairs object and just connect it over there. Okay. Now I need to place down the floors on the second floor. So I just press the F key and up here, I can see which grid level I currently have selected. I could also add a simple tile map, but I thought it looked a bit better being just like this. So like this, I'm playing around on the first level. 
and I press the F key and there you go now I'm on the second level so you can see yep it's all up there so as I swap them around you can see I've got a total of four levels all right so in here and I can just place them and now up here and let's place down some railings so just like this looks pretty good all right so that's it here's my very basic house and now I can move my player character go inside go up the stairs and yep here I am over here and yep there's my fully working house now to make it a bit more pretty I can place down the general loose objects so I can click on this one to toggle between the various types that I added so let's place some crates maybe down here then some books maybe all the way in there then some flowers let's put some flowers right in there for a rug let's put a rug rotate it a bit put it in there and finally some nice trees so let's put them right around here all right so look at that here is my nice home and i can control my character go up go down go outside go behind the trees and so on and yep it looks pretty great so now i can hit the save button and yep there you go it's saved now i can quit and now i can hit play again okay so here i am back on an empty scene and I press the unload button and there you go everything loads exactly the same as previously so all the objects exactly where they should be and I can play around interact with them and yep everything works perfect all right awesome now here is my final demo scene so I built all of this exactly like you just saw so I've got all the various floors the walls the stairs the objects outside and so on over here I got some nice glass a nice garden and over here I got a really tall building so I've got my character and I can just walk around and go inside any of these buildings and just interact with them. And just for fun I also made these nice NPCs. So again they are characters from that same asset pack. So here is a real nice king, a real nice monk and so on. And yep they just walk around through various positions just to make this look like a pretty nice living breathing village. So as you can see this system is relatively simple but by adding some more complexity onto the various object types you can make them look really good in order to make some really nice cities. Alright, so that's the full demo. You can download the project files and inspect them for yourself to see how all of the code works. Now, in a future video, I would like to take this system and convert it into a first person or third person view. So essentially, I would like to take this and make a building system kind of like Valheim. So you have the camera behind the player and you can point and look to a position in order to build something. So that's my next goal to expand upon the system. So make sure you hit the bell icon so you don't miss that future video. And don't forget to check out Jason Wyman's courses with the link in the description. Get the Code Monkey bundle and enjoy all of my games as a free bonus. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.